let's go ahead and turn on that load. Turn on this. All the way up. Fixed That's... right up, doesn't complain. So it's handling the whatever the, the temperature is, which we had that in dry ice for 20, 30 minutes. It's still got ice on the plastic. Yeah. Yeah, well, hey, Jared, how you doing today? I'm, I'm, I'm good, how are you? I'm doing pretty good. Um, I'm ready to have some fun. You ready to have some fun? I'm gonna try. Uh, guys, we are doing an amazing video today. Uh, thank you very, very much to John from Light Harvest Solar. He graciously was able to do this video. Uh, we're gonna test this guy right here. It's the Relyon's newest. Yeah, well, um, I think this is their newest lineup. Uh, the Insight series is kind of their new, um, uh, they're like kind of fancier version. Uh, the older Relyon batteries, you know, it's kind of just the blue box. Sure. Uh, you hook up, you get your power out. It's great. They work pretty good. Uh, but these give you some advanced features. Uh, and this in particular is the low temperature series. We're going to get into all of that. And the reason I brought John on was because guess what, guys? I am in a lot of positions that you are in that I don't, I don't know. I just don't know. I bring in people like John, uh, again, very graciously. Uh, Always was, happy. Thank you very much. He works GM of Light Harvest Solar. I've been an ambassador for Lion for many years. Mm -hmm. uh, they were the first battery company that I actually worked with. Uh, I bought four of their batteries for my Ghost 2, my second van. Loved them so much. I asked to be an ambassador. They took me on. And ever since then, I have been in love with their batteries. John at Light Harvest Solar, you actually do sell them. Yep. Uh, we stock a few of them. Um, we've got a couple other batteries that we prefer just for specific reasons that we'll get into a little bit later. Sure, absolutely. Um, but I would say rely on is always on my short list. We're not, I'm not getting paid for this and John, I'm not paying him for this. So no. very, again, thank you so much to him. I just love doing it. Rely on did send me a couple of these for us to test out. I asked permission if I could have John in the video because again, I guys, I am not an expert. He is the expert. I'm gonna learn a lot and hopefully you guys will as well. I sure hope so. How do I even get into this? Cause it's like, what, what are we talking about? Why? Relia came out with the new Insight, this battery. Mm -hmm. It is the 12V120-GC2-LT. The GC2 series. So yep. it's, the it's the Insight series. It is the Insight series. Um, what I can tell from that is it's 12 volt, 120 amp hour. So those are important specifications. GC2 is referring to the form factor. Uh, this is a GC2 battery form factor. You'll see these in golf cart batteries. Okay. Um, RVs use them a lot of the time. It's a pretty common form factor. Uh, and then the LT is low temperature. Low temperature, so which is really important. And uh, if you can't see it in frame, there is a cooler right here. And John, again, graciously went out and bought dry ice for us to literally test the low temperature of this. So yeah, we're gonna push it. We're gonna see what it does. What are you planning on doing to this battery today? We're actually, there's another one over here. Yeah. What, what are you planning on doing with them? Um, so we've got a couple of things we're gonna do. Um, we're gonna test the uh, charge and discharge rates, see how it performs when we kind of push those a little bit. Uh, Cause that's an important thing with your batteries. If you happen to, you know, overload your system or something like that, you want batteries that are gonna be able to handle. While we're doing that, this baby's gonna be in that cooler there, cooling down. Okay. Uh, and once it gets to a nice temperature, we're gonna start doing the same to it. We're gonna hook it up to the inverter, run some loads, see what it can do, and see um, if those cutoff voltage or cutoff temperatures are where they should. We just took these out of the boxes. Yeah, yeah. We, we've never tested them. Yeah, you them got them. I think a couple of days ago. A couple of days ago, and. Uh, they are, did you already say this, it was 120 amp hour? Yeah, 120 amp hour. 120 amp hour, which is slightly bigger than your standard 120, uh, yeah, 100 yeah. amp hour. Yeah, a little bit bigger. That's because they're a little bit taller than your standard battery. Just gonna, we're gonna plug some stuff in and see what it does. All right, great. Um, I might get behind the camera and I might just film you then. Sure. All right, let's do that. Can do. All right, cool. So what are you doing? What are you, you just put gloves on, so you're scaring yep, uh, me. So these are uh, welding gloves, but they'll do just fine for this purpose. Um, I've got a bunch of dry ice in that cooler there. Okay. Uh, safety precautions. Um, just got to talk about it since we're working with dry ice. Yeah. Do not ever touch it with your bare hands. Chances are good you'll lose some skin. Pretty so, much, yeah, you burn your skin is what yeah, happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You give yourself frostbite real, real quick. Um, it is dangerous. Do not do this at home. So, got this bag of dry ice. Uh, and we're just gonna break it up a bit. Oh my God. It's going to get this cooler very, very cold. Now, question for you, John. Are yeah. we going to damage that battery by putting it in there? 
Well, we're going to find out. Oh, boy. <laughs> I don't think so. Um, we're not going to let it get like ultra, ultra cold. Um, I just want to get it cold enough that we can test the uh, low temperature feature of it. And now we're going to just let say goodbye for a little while. Let it sit there for a little bit. Uh, in the meantime, let's see what this can do. First off, can you just tell me why, what you like about the battery and then we'll kind of go into your dislikes about yeah. the battery. With all the GC2 batteries, I like the form factor. Uh, it's really easy to stack up a bunch of them. Um, it's really easy to find like battery boxes and compartments to house them because okay. it's a very standardized size. So size, I love. Uh, 12 volt, we also like just cause it's, you know, again, standardization, everything out there. With this specific battery, it does have some neat advanced features. Uh, we've got the CAN bus here. That's not something that I personally have worked with very much. For somebody with more advanced use, I would say, uh, there's there's some sense in having a CAN bus. What is a CAN bus, and what do you, do you under, do you know what it is? Like, cause I have no idea. We're we're stretching the boundaries of what I know, uh, okay. just cause I don't really work with it, so it's not something that I've I've developed a skill with. But it's essentially a communications protocol that lets the batteries and uh, whatever you're using to charge or load the batteries, it lets it all communicate. One of the industry standards for how to get all this stuff talking to each other. So is it part of the BMS? Uh, yes, yeah, okay. be part of the BMS. So that is a new feature, I think, for Rely yes. to, uh, to add the CAN bus into it. Yeah, that is all new as far as I'm aware. That's moving with the times, man. Yeah, there's a lot of other companies that are also doing the CAN bus, uh, but I really like just how they have it set up on this one. Okay. It's easy, it makes sense. You know, you have your two batteries right there. You just plug one into the next one. You also touched on the dual. Dual terminals is something that is just kind of standard for the golf cart battery style of thing. Usually you'll have an automotive terminal and then a post like this. Got it. But because we aren't using these in cars, they have two M8 posts, which I think is 5 sixteenths inch. This would allow you to connect more things without like stacking up terminals super high. It'll just give you a little better result with that. What are some of the cons that, you, that you're well, not liking? Well, I've got a pretty short list, actually. Um, I, I haven't like encountered anything I didn't like about it yet, aside from the LED readout. Which is right here, which mm -hmm. if you turn it on... Uh, and it is, it is actually on. Um, if it wasn't flashing at all, that's its storage mode. Yeah, there's a couple other battery companies that like you can like hit a button and it tells you the percentage. Yeah, and it, so uh, like that kind of thing. Just in their informational yeah, guide, they have like a, a like a, a table nice... right there of how the percentages would read out. It's not immediately obvious. That's my complaint with it. Right. Uh, like with those other gauges, you click the button, you read the percentage. It's just super straightforward. What I've got going on is the battery is hooked in over there. The inverter is hooked in as well. Uh, and then the BMV is in between them. So if we take a look over here, we can see that the battery is at 13.2 volts right now. Um, ignore the amp part. That's uh, just because I didn't do a zero current calibration. Hey, look at me, a liar. Um, so the zero current calibration was actually done. Uh, that was the idle consumption of the inverter, um, which I think we've touched on in some of our other videos, maybe a little bit. Uh, I tell people, keep your inverter off if you're not using it. That's why. Short answer, that's accurate. So I know we're getting about three amps out of this battery right now. Right? That's because the inverter's on. Yes, the inverter's on. Which, it so that means that, that inverter by itself is just drawing three amps. Yep. We also did just look over the specs to just double check, yep. but the continuous amp discharge is... Uh, 160 amps. 160 and amps. And actually... When, uh, what does that mean too? Yeah. Uh, so that means uh, if you have a load that is pulling 160 amps at 12 volts, uh, it'll just run that. It'll, it'll be fine. It'll just go. What pulls? Something like this. The space heater. So this space heater uh, should be... Uh, I think it's around 1300 watts, uh, which would be about 100 amps. And this is a 160 amp discharge, which obviously can handle definitely that. Yeah, so if I just... Good, it did start. I was worried for a second. <laughs> um, so it is running right now. On, it is running. And if we run over here... Are we plugged? Number... I just want to make sure, I want to let everybody know that it's, is it plugged oh, in? Nope. It's I not plugged not in. plugged into shore power right now. There's the other end of that plug. Okay. So we are running entirely off the battery right now. This one says 136 amps. Yep. That is amps. The top one's the voltage. And that's that little space here right here. You guys yep. can hear that it's running. Uh, and looks like that is actually a little over 1600 watts all told. 
Wow. Maybe explain to the people why we're using a space heater because really that is the biggest drawer. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, anything we could find right now. Yep. Uh, heating and cooling tends to be your biggest draws. Space heaters are also uh, very steady loads. So like an air conditioner will cycle on and off, but a space heater, especially in kind of a cooler warehouse like we're in, yeah. it'll just run. It'll just go. I wish I had thought ahead and had a larger Ah, load. what just beeped at us? So that is the under voltage protection. Uh, oh, wow. Which is actually pretty curious to me. Yeah, it just kicked back on. It did kick back on. This is the first time us yeah, trying it. We're doing it fresh. That's uh, So we're seeing some things that I, I didn't know if I was going to see or not. This battery, we just took it out of the box. So it should be at you know, about a half charge. That's usually how they ship. And I'm trying to see where the issue might be. The undervolt protection, by the way, is, is a pretty good thing. Yeah, that's what you want. Actually protecting your battery's health. Uh, uh, okay. That's more what it's for. I also want to stress the fact that you're running the space heater off of just one battery. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's very few batteries on the market right now that can do yes. what, what is this is doing right yep. now. Uh, for example, um, Reliance's older series, uh, the Legacy series, yep. the 100 amp hour batteries have a 100 amp max discharge. Okay. So it would probably do this for a minute or two, and then it would shut itself off. Interesting. Without the other battery in the cooler right now, what if you had the two batteries? Uh, we should have no problems. Zero. Zero problems. But it's going into under voltage protection shutdown, which means it's dropping too low for the inverter. Uh, it should not be dropping that low. Um, so I want to find out why. Okay. Could be a couple of things. Um, it could be the connections here. I do feel this connection is getting a little bit warm. Should we, should we cut and then you do it some diagnostics? Um, yeah, I'm gonna get a couple of tools. I, can yeah, I really just needed to grab my voltmeter. Um, so this is a very valuable tool if you're trying to do diagnostics. Okay. So what I saw there- I'm gonna turn this off, is that all right? Uh, no, you can actually leave that on. Okay. That, that'll be useful. Um, why don't you grab the heat gun too? The temperature gun. Yeah. Um, you're welcome to hold that. You might've seen me like feeling the wires a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I'm checking for heat. Heat is a sign of a bad connection. Okay. Uh, I can tell this terminal is warming up. Let me point it right on there. Yeah, it's at 90. Compared it to the other one. The negative? Yeah. 85? Yep. So, so there's uh, that five, five degree, degree difference. Will and make it's, a difference. It's going to keep like warming up. Yeah. yeah. And um, it's going to keep warming up. I know the problem is like on the wire itself, not in the battery. And by feeling the wires, I can feel where the source of heat is. And that's where the bad connection is. That's and crazy, as far as man. I can tell, it's right here. That's crazy to me. So you're just gonna change out the, the, the positive wire? Yeah. Alrighty. As we were, uh, John was looking for the other connection, you realized uh, it was- um, It's already on the other battery. In the other battery. So uh, we're just gonna hop over to checking that one out. Looks like we are below freezing internal temperature. Definitely we got some frost you can see on the wires there. That should be pretty fun. Let's uh, get it out of there. Yeah, a little rough and frosty battery. And uh, how long would you say it was in there for? Maybe like oh, half an hour? Uh, 20, 30 minutes, 20, 30 yeah. Minutes? Okay. yeah. Let's go ahead and turn on that load. Turn on this? All the way up. That's... Mixed right up, doesn't complain. So it's handling the, whatever the, the temperature is, which we had that in dry ice for 20, 30 minutes. It's still got ice on the plastic. Yeah. I, again, I can't really tell you what the internal temperature is. Uh, only thing I would maybe consider adding to these is uh, like Bluetooth monitoring in the BMS with temperature monitoring as well. So they do not have Bluetooth in there. As far as I understand, uh, this, this particular model does not have Bluetooth in it. I do believe some of the insights do. Um, I was looking into that a little while ago and was just a little bit unclear. Uh, so we'll, we'll chat with Michael about it. We will have to, Michael's our, our guy over there. Keeping it in a cooler full of dry ice for a little while. It just keeps running. It's not a problem. Uh, that's what I wanted to see, and that I love seeing. I guess this will be the ultimate test now. Both work. It, I mean, this is where you said it should work. Oh, it definitely should. They rely on specs on their page, on their like landing page, or their or their just their website. Yeah, they just so good. They give you everything I would want, and it's organized. It's easy to figure out. Like if I need to know some characteristic of a Reliant battery, I just go to their website. Let's give that another try. I never even turned that off, so that should just kick on. Yeah, it should just kick on. Cool. Reset my voltmeter. And it just did. All right, that's a little bit more consistent. 
what is this, two gauge wire? Might have just been pushing the rating of the wire a little bit. So we're losing a little, yeah, no, that, that's probably what was going on there. You, so you think the, the gauge of the wire was too small? Uh, I think the gauge of the wire was a little bit small for running that off a single one of these. Off a single battery. Yeah. So it's always better to actually gauge up in wire. Yes. Realistically, I wouldn't pair a 3000 watt inverter with a single battery. Yeah, normally nobody would do that. Yeah, that's just, you're spending money on inverter that you don't need to spend, or you're not spending on batteries that you do. I'm happier with this. Uh, we're still seeing some voltage drop, which is pretty much expected. It has not clicked off. It has not clicked off. Uh, that is definitely as expected with two batteries. When this was shutting down, it wasn't the battery shutting off. It was this saying, hey, the voltage is getting a little bit too low, which is also because it was seeing a good half a volt lower than what the battery actually was. Right, okay. You know, why don't you plug, you know, Light Harvest Solar real quick, because like, what, what do you guys do? Because again, thanks, yeah. thanks again. Anytime, Jared, I, I love being here. I thank you for doing these videos yeah, of with course. us. I really appreciate it. Um, so yeah, we are Light Harvest Solar. I, I manage the shop. Um, we've got a fairly small team, small shop. Uh, but we are your resident experts in DIY van solar. We do a couple of other things as well, but that's kind of our core market. Uh, best way to reach out to us, uh, just go to our website, uh, fill out the get a quote thing. There's a little button towards the top. Um, that's gonna ask you all about what your needs are, what you wanna be able to do. And then we will get you a itemized estimate or two uh, fully designed, fully compatible with itself. We're gonna give you a Lego kit, you're gonna put it together, you're gonna have a great time. You know, if you call us, you're gonna reach a human. Uh, yeah, we're will. not gonna have you go through like some, you know, long phone chain just to leave a message. Uh, even if we don't pick up the phone, we'll call you back. So not only do they sell all these components, they sell the solar panels, everybody, and they also sell the portable power stations, yep. which I'm a huge fan of and I had in my last van and I'll be having with me uh, in my Rivian eventually. Yeah, and stay tuned. Uh, I think we're getting, uh, we're, we might be getting some other nice stuff down the road in okay. terms of that. Okay, awesome, that sounds great. So I'm gonna do some further testing over the next couple of days. Uh, just do a little more long-term, like charge discharge. Looks uh, like I'm leaving the batteries with John. Since you are supposed to generally charge them up fully once you get them out of the box, and that's something we didn't do. Okay. Uh, I wanna give them really the the best chance i can give them okay um, i'm gonna charge it up fully i'm gonna do some of this testing again uh and i'll let you know how it goes and maybe you can, i will uh, end the video there let's do that does that work yeah that sounds great to all me. right man cool like thanks buddy thank you uh everybody i am back with john it's um we actually were recording that on a weekend it was a saturday yeah today is a wednesday so it's been four days yeah it's been a couple of days however and many i you know i'm terrible at math i couldn't tell you <laughs> terrible at math he <laughs> runs an entire sh you know whatever so he's gonna explain everything i'm just gonna flip the camera around he'll explain it all so what's up buddy hey so um on our last testing we got a we got a couple of odd results um, the one that was most concerning to me is we were getting a pretty significant drop in voltage. Yeah. And I was initially concerned that might have been uh, something to do with the battery. You know, something not performing right, high internal resistance. So I went ahead and hooked up a couple of other batteries. Okay. Now, uh, I do want to note that I don't have different batteries connected at the same time. One brand, one model at a time. You just don't want to mix and match. We've explained that in other videos, I think. That it seems like the resistance is in my setup. It is most likely uh, in the plug junctions themselves. That's real common. And that's why we like to avoid plug junctions and stuff like that whenever we can. The voltage drop wasn't so much the battery's fault. Yeah. It was more so your fault. Essentially, yes. <laughs> I don't want to put yeah. you on blast no, like that. That's, but... uh, it, it's the hardware's fault. Let's blame yeah. the hardware. All right, so before we do the last part, what is your final thoughts on the on the new rely on inside final thoughts on the new reliance um they seem to kick pretty good um we pushed their uh discharge i actually um i didn't get this on video i probably i probably should have because it was pretty cool okay um but i have a uh you know real quick and dirty spot welder setup that i built in my backyard okay um i hooked that up to one of these batteries wow uh, and it was pulling you know, I could only run it for very short periods of time because that's what it's designed to do. Or no, that's what my setup is designed for, not the battery. Right. Uh, but the battery hit a good 200 and change amps and did not shut off, shut off on me. 
Which they are only claiming that the 160, you it's said. It's 160 continuous. If you actually look in their uh, documentation, which is all really easily available on their website, find out that there's kind of tiers to it. But your spot wall there's definitely pulling a high it, amperage. We measured it to about 215. Wow, that's crazy. Um, so it just, it did that, you know, granted I wasn't hitting it for more than about 20 seconds at a time. Did 200 plus, didn't have an issue with it. Cool. That was really good for me to see. Now, what are you gonna do just for fun? Give a little comparison is we're gonna run the space heater on each one of these batteries. Excellent. Um, and I've given them, they're all fully charged. I've given them all the best chance I can give them. First battery. Uh, so I've got it hooked up to the Lion right now. Can I put this over here? So Absolutely. We... All right, inverter's on. You can go ahead and turn that on. Got it. Starts right up. And we're seeing, yeah, about 125 amps. Hey, we're not gonna like blow anything up, are we? Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> no, I did that over the weekend. Got it. If you look there, we're bolt, we're seeing about half a volt in difference. Uh, that's pretty close to what we were seeing on the Reliant battery. Yep. Um, and I also saw that on the other battery we're about to test next. So I can pretty much confirm it's not any of these. It's the setup. I believe the Lion has like a 150 continuous. Yeah, so the Lion, I expect. You were expecting it to work. This is, like, I would be surprised if it did. I'm, I'm actually more excited about checking out the next one. I'm going to turn that, that off. Works. Go ahead and switch it off. The best practices, I'll switch the inverter off too. And I've got these on Anderson plugs. That in. Are right, you ready? Okay, yeah. So we're hooked back up. Turn the inverter back on. Yeah, you can just crank that. It'll turn on. Cool. And there we go. And it is actually running it. No, it's it not. It dropped really quick. <laughs> but now a couple of, couple of caveats. This battery is not rated for the amount of current that it's trying to pull. <laughs> we just so, wanted to do it. <laughs> honestly, it was really impressive to me that it did it at all. No, now it's just, it's saying yeah, this now is... it's just, it's real unhappy. Uh, these are also a few years old uh, and definitely have been beat up to a pretty good extent. All right, so John, now you are just gonna take that off and you are gonna put on the rely on for a reason that you wanna show the audience now that you have fixed the issue that you had? Yeah, because okay. I feel like we didn't give it the best chance last time, you know, without the, the pre-charging and with the resistance in the system, it just dipped low enough that the inverter's low voltage disconnect kicked on. That's nice of you. You know, it was awfully nice of them to send these over. They are really nice. Yeah, in terms of like visual presentation, I'm seeing everything I want. Okay, we're gonna switch this out. Turn on the fan. Turn on the heater, I should say. Oh, that was my voltmeter. <laughs> ah, <I was> like, <laughs> made me nervous. I was like, I was like John, what are you doing? <laughs> so we're seeing about the same half volt of drop. This is a 12 one, 11 five. It is still, again, it's, it seems like they're their like kind of baseline set point is a little lower than I'd expect for a lithium battery. Got it. That might be something to do with the internal uh, cell architecture. It, it could be, it's probably something to do with how it's built, but it's not something I really have the ability to diagnose exactly. The, but it's not shutting off. It's not beeping at us. We're good now. Uh, it's not yet. Um, I think if I ran it for, you know, 20 minutes or something like that, it might start. Uh, but again, this is with a single battery running pretty close to its rating. Uh, when I put a second battery in parallel with it, worked great, no problems whatsoever. Um, all right, well, cool, man, thank you. Yeah, anytime. The biggest thing that everybody does in van life is price points. Yep. And like, you know price points because you sell the things. Yeah, pretty reasonable. So, but there is a price difference between the three. Mm -hmm. We're not gonna go into that. In my opinion, you get what you pay for. I definitely agree. Okay. Um, you see a lot of really cheap lithium batteries on the market. Uh, mo again, you get what you pay for. Most of them are cheap for a reason. I was gonna say, I don't understand how that all works because lithium is lithium. Lithium iron phosphate is lithium iron phosphate. Oh man, do you wanna have a long conversation about cell grades? <laughs> we could. Um, and also, I guess the other big aspect of what's in these batteries is the BMS system. Yes. Each one has a different BMS, which is battery management software, battery management system. Uh, battery management system, I think system, is, yeah. is the acronym. Wide range of quality in those as well. Okay. So cell quality, 
BMS quality, internal connection size. Like there's a bunch of factors that go into it. Well, we're gonna end this video here and you are actually gonna see a lot more rely on in my upcoming videos because I have a huge announcement coming up about them. Thank you, John from Light Harvest Solar. Go check them out if you need anything. Obviously, thank you to Reliant for hooking us up with the batteries. I'm taking them back. Sorry, John. That's I, okay. I want I want them back. <laughs> I don't uh, blame you. I'll probably use them for a future van. What? All right, guys. We'll see you later.